From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Tom Wilkins at Global Casualty, Johnny. Oh, hi, Tom. How are you doing? Lousy. Right now, I've got one big headache. A $100,000 headache. Try an ice bag and go back to bed. A bag of ice would cure me, all right, but not the kind of ice you're thinking of. Hmm? A hundred thousand bucks worth of uncut diamonds, Johnny. They've been stolen, and we wrote the policy on them. A hundred thousand? That's a fat lot of rocks, Tom. And a fat fee if you can recover them for us. You interested? Oh, that's the understatement of the week. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Home Office, Global Casualty, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenditures during my investigation of the picture postcard matter. Expense account item one, a dollar and a quarter. Taxi to the office of Global Casualty, where Tom Wilkins was waiting for me. Well, looks like we're bucking a pretty well-organized outfit in this deal, Johnny. The way they pulled the job shows they'd planned it out pretty well. How did it happen, Tom, and where? The diamonds were being taken by special courier from Zurich, Switzerland to Amsterdam. They got lifted at the Zurich airport. How? The airport was crowded. The courier was carrying the diamonds in a leather briefcase strapped to his wrist. A fight broke out suddenly. In the confusion, the courier was slugged and the case cut loose from him. After which the fight suddenly stopped, huh? Yeah. It was obviously a rigged brawl. By the time the police arrived, the people involved had disappeared. With the uncut diamonds. Mm -hmm. Sounds like their timing was pretty good. Too good. How about the courier? You get a look at the guy who slugged him? No, it happened from behind. Anybody in the airport crowd able to describe the guys who'd rigged the brawl? Well, no clear description. Somebody mentioned that one of the men involved was stocky, sort of a bull neck. Oh, great. Probably only a couple of million people answering that description. True. Zurich police turn up anything? Not a thing. Well, look, Tom, I'm an insurance investigator, not a magician. You better get yourself another boy. Whoa, Johnny. We got one lead, and it could be enough if it's on the level. Oh, well, let's have it. The robbery was day before yesterday. This morning, I got an airmail special delivery letter from Zurich. Here, take a look. Uh Regarding the recent diamond matter, I have information which may enable you to recover them. For a reward. So I see. And he wants to talk to somebody about it. Yeah, and I nominate you. It's signed Sebastian. Any idea who he is? None at all. As you see, I was to reply to general delivery in Zurich. I did. Told him you were the one. Uh Uh-huh. How do I find him? I'll read on. You're to register at the Polo Hotel in Zurich. He or she will contact you there. You think it's on the level? I don't know. Could be a phony. Somebody trying to ace in and promote a fast buck. It's happened before. Sure, and this could be another one. But right now, it's the only lead we've got. We've got to take a chance and go along with it. I can't say I care for the postscript here. Extreme caution necessary. Leads me to think there's one thing you'd better be real sure about, Johnny. What's that? That you don't get contacted by the wrong guy. And so, with the sun sinking slowly in the west and my morale slowly following suit, I said goodbye to my cheerful friend and set sail for distant shores. Item two, $622, plane fare and incidentals to Zurich, Switzerland. It was a quiet, uneventful flight, and I had a lot of time to think. But I didn't much like what I was thinking. Whoever had lifted the uncut stones wouldn't exactly like the idea of an informant spilling the beans to me. And I had a slight hunch I'd be lucky if beans were the only thing that got spilled. My plane landed at Zurich in the late afternoon. I hired a cab, that's item three, one dollar, to take me to the Polo Hotel. The city looked bright, fresh, and clean. It gave me a lift. And the sight of a very pretty girl walking quickly to my cab as we were ready to pull away from the airport didn't hurt either. Oh, darling, I... Well, oh. hello. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I made a mistake. Darn it. I thought you that were... I was somebody else. Yeah, that's the trouble with having an ordinary-looking face. Well, I wouldn't call it ordinary. But, but please... Well... Please, I I wonder, could I share your cab into the city? Oh, by all means. I guess my friend was not on that plane after all. Oh, that's rough. Okay, driver. Very good of you. Well, I'm a real prince when you get to know me, Miss... Schaefer. Ilsa Schaefer. Johnny Dollar. And speaking of getting to know me... Driver, please, pull up. 
Well, hey, how come? Oh, I am so sorry, Mr. Dalla. I just remembered something I have to do. We were just beginning to get acquainted. I know. A pity, isn't it? Well, look, wait, don't... But perhaps this will make up for it. Well, offhand, I can't think of a better start. Now, if you'll only... Goodbye. Hey, Ilsa, wait. Hmm. Well, if this is the customary Swiss hospitality driver, sign me up. Then I realized that Ilsa had forgotten her purse. I had the driver cruise around a few minutes, but we didn't see her anywhere. So I dropped her purse off at the lost and found office of the taxi cab company, then went on to the Polo Hotel. It was in the newer quarter of Zurich, on the lower slopes of the Zurichberg. I went inside and started for the desk in the lobby, but I didn't quite make it. Turn here, please. Sorry, I'm heading for the desk. I said turn here, please. You know, I can't say I care for the way you keep nudging me in the ribs. That wouldn't be a gun, would it? Yes, it would. Now, if you will please come with me. Okay, mister. Where to? To the side entrance. I'll say one thing. I sure didn't expect all the reception committees. The first one I like much better. Uh, skip it, will you? Outside. That car over there. Hey, look, isn't it about time you tell me what this is all about? There's no use pretending you do not know. The diamonds. Oh. You think I've got them, maybe? I do not think. I'm sure of it. Well, this may come as a nasty surprise to you, mister, but I... I have no time to waste. She entered your cab with a purse. She? And... Ilsa? And left without it. And she was, uh, shall we say, very friendly to you. Oh, that I remember. And I have no complaints, believe me, but she didn't give me any diamonds. I warn you. They weren't in her purse, either. They checked the contents at Lost and Found. Get into the car. Hey, look, this routine won't get you anywhere. Into the car. Hey, take it easy, friend. You're trying to poke a hole in my ribs. Okay, okay, relax. Take it into the car. I jerked the door open suddenly and knocked him off balance. I swung at him, but he ducked and lunged at me. I went sprawling into the street in front of an oncoming car. One of the fenders hit me a glancing blow and I bounced against the curb. By the time I could get to my feet again, my friend with a gun had disappeared and so had his car. I wasn't hurt, but it took several minutes to convince the very scared cab driver who'd accidentally hit me. He should be scared. Expense account item four, $12.75. Telephone call to Tom Wilkins at Global Casualty Bank in the States. I'm glad you called, Johnny. Uh, any luck so far? No luck, but sure a lot of action. Well, what do you mean? Well, first off, an attractive little doll shares my cab for a few blocks, plants a kiss on me, and scrambles out, leaving her purse behind. What? Then a strong arm collars me and tells me the girl must have passed the diamonds to me in the cab. Oh, but that doesn't make sense. Well, anyway, that's what happened so far. Plus my almost getting run over in the process. Look, Johnny, I knew this wouldn't be an easy assignment, but... Uh... Yeah, I know. Yeah. Don't worry, Tom. I'm still all in one piece. But I'm beginning to realize what Sebastian meant in his letter about extreme caution being necessary. Has anyone contacted you yet? No, only the aforementioned pair. No sign of this Sebastian, whoever he or she is. Well, I still don't understand Neither why... Neither do I. Either the boys who stole the diamonds have lost them, or there's another outfit trying to get their hands on them. In which case, I'm right in the middle. Johnny, Sebastian's still our only lead. You've got to give him plenty of chance to contact you. Yeah, I know. we Will do. But be careful. Look, I'm with you, believe me. I went up to my room and stretched out on the bed to wait. Two hours went by. Nothing happened. Finally, I went down to the lobby. Expense account item five, 30 cents, two English language newspapers. I settled down in the most conspicuous chair I could find and waited some more. Still nothing. I worked my way through the newspaper slowly. Then, finally, somebody came over to the chair that was back to back with mine. I took a quick look. He was well dressed, dark wavy hair, medium height. But he paid no attention to me and started reading his newspaper. Looked like a wrong guess. Maybe I'd have to wait until tomorrow. So I started to get up. Mr. Dollar. Mm, what? Please. Put your newspaper in front of your face and do not turn around. Okay. Who are you? Sebastian, who wrote the letter to your company in the United States. Oh? It must not appear we are talking to each other. Somebody watching us? I would not doubt it. So you want to talk about the robbery of those uncut diamonds? How do I know you have any real information? I will give you proof presently. But first, let us talk about the reward. What is the amount? Depends on how good the information is, Sebastian. I am talking about the diamonds. Oh? 
Suppose I were to tell you that I was in a position to guarantee their return. Go on. For $25,000 and no further investigation, I will arrange for the return of the diamonds. I'd have to have proof that you know what you're talking about. Of course. Let me see. My back is to you. Is it your right hand which is closest to the wall and shielded from the lobby? Yeah. Put it down beside your chair. Do not take the newspaper away from your face. Okay. Here. Picture postcard. Yes. Addressed to me, as you see. The writing's in German. What does it mean? It is the equivalent of your American expression, having wonderful time, wish you were here. Signed by F. Gruner. Who's he or she? A friend. Look at the picture on the other side. The Kleibach Inn? Yes. An inn in the town of Kleibach in the Alps, several hours from here. Hey, wait a minute. Are the diamonds at the Kleibach Inn? No. But this postcard is part of the key to their location. Part of the key? Oh, now, look, Sebastian. This just isn't good enough. Shh, I can't... Shh. Someone is coming. I cannot talk further with you here. It is not safe. Well, look, Do not you... worry. I will furnish all the proof you need. When? Tonight. Now listen carefully. I am going. I will leave my newspaper on the floor beside my chair. Wait a few minutes, then get up. Drop your paper, and when you pick it up, pick up mine also. Then what? On an inner page of my paper, I have written my address. Come there in two hours. If I am not there, wait for me. Now, just a minute. How can I... Please. There is no time for further questions. Two hours, Mr. Dollar. In my room. Two hours later, I went to the address he'd given me. A small apartment in another part of the city. <laughs> now answer. He hadn't arrived yet. I went inside and waited. Fifteen minutes went by. No sign of Sebastian. And then something started pecking away at my brain. A faint sound. I finally pegged it. A dripping faucet. It came from the bathroom. The bathtub was full. In it, floating face down, was Sebastian. Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a perfect stranger wants to get acquainted and a beautiful girl asks me to go skiing. Trouble is, either or both of them could be trying to kill me. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>